Welcome to another Wellness Way USA podcast. I'm your host, Jeb Odom, and here we have with us our owner, Martha Odom, and Dr. Robert Corvino. Today, we're going to talk about blue zones. What do you blue know about blue zones? zones? Okay, I know absolutely nothing, so doctor, take it away. What is a blue zone? So a blue zone, you know, is basically what they've done is they've done a little bit of research about you know, where in the world are people living the longest? What they've found is that there's a couple specific cities around the world where people have lived the longest. Brownsville. Browns. (laughs) (laughs) And what they've found is these locations specifically, uh, they've called blue zones. East Milton. East Milton is one of them. (laughs) And the coal mines of Alabama. (laughs) I think they have bigger problems than what they eat. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, if you're in a coal mine all day, what you eat is probably yeah. second. It's whatever you can put in that metal lunchbox with your headlamp. And your thermos. Yeah. <laughs> probably a lot better insulation on containers than they used to have. So they might actually be able to keep their food from spoiling. True. But you're underground. It's got to be a little cooler. But yeah. then you want to maybe keep some of that coal dust out of there. They probably eat a lot of coal dust. Wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, oh. because they come bull- back home black. Everywhere. Yeah. Not a blue zone, probably. No, it's a black zone. What do you think the average lifespan was in your area that was close to the coal 40s, mines? 40s and 50s. Really? My, my father did not work the coal mines, and he lived 52. And what about his peers? Or, Sa- around, around the, the same, same age? age. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe something to this. Mm-hmm. Go with it, Robert. Tell us about these blue zones let's, we keep hearing about. Let's Are see. they fancy places? So here's a couple cities. Beach City, California. So reduced obesity by 25% and tobacco used by 36%. Alberta Lee, Minnesota has reduced healthcare claims by 49%. That's that's really high. An increased life expectancy by three years. Fort Worth, Texas won $3.2 million in safe routes to school funding for several schools. Texas, huh? Yeah, that's... That's so it's a big eaters in Texas usually, yeah. right? Well, I mean, I, I would think Minnesota has all their germs frozen. Minnesota. What do you want to talk about? You want to talk about Minnesota? I don't. It don't matter. We we were going rogue hey, today, hey, completely go rogue. Let's do Minnesota. Okay. Blue zone right. or not? Question mark. Let's see. I guess that's not talking about our new political races. Blue zone. No, I don't think this. The blue has any in- indicator of party affiliation. Okay. Let's see. It looks like the main things when it comes to Minnesota that they talk about is they cold. community design Fargo. improvements. So more space for walking, more space for jogging, biking, healthier workplaces. How do you get more space for walking? I'm confused. I think it's safer. They get more earth than we do? More. <laughs> they may have more sidewalks. I do believe in Minnesota they do have a little bit more earth. Maybe they should sell more boots. <laughs> <laughs> you could walk where you like with these boots. No limited walking. They're made walking. for walking. Yep. What kind of boots you got on today, Mom? Uh, I have on some fry boots. Ooh. Are those good? Are those top-of-the-line boots, I hear? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? A little, a little Comfy? bit there. Are they broken uh, in yet? I am wearing them for the first day, and from my experience of being on a farm, you have to wear them for about... Two years. Yeah. <laughs> Get a little cow like, poop on them and, yeah. you know, rub mm. that in real good. Mm. Mm-hmm. Conditions. You know, looking at those, I think you might not want to do that. Yeah. So, but they're... Not they going do. cow tipping in those? Not cow tipping. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> not going to do it. Back to back to Minnesota. Back to Minnesota. We're walking in Minnesota. Looks like they have increased tobacco cessation. So that, that definitely plays a really big role. In health, um, so we're, uh, tell me exactly what makes a blue zone. So a blue zone are a couple places around the world where they've found that they have the highest life expectancy. Well, now why would that be Minnesota? And we're talking about Minnesota. Minnesota doesn't so, sound right. So maybe it? this will answer the question. Better. I would think Hawaii. So here's here's what they've found. They found nine specific things that are related to all of the places in the world that have these high life expectancies. So these are the nine similarities. One, movement, they move naturally. 
right? So a lot of walking, biking, hiking. Two, purpose. So having a purposeful life, downshifting, so de-stressing your life. Now, with regards to eating, 80% rule, eating 80% of what you would normally eat, plant slant, so eating more plants, wine at five, so actually having a glass of wine every day. The right tribe, so hanging out with the right people, loved ones first, and having somewhere where you belong. Sounds a little bit deviated from just simply diet. Yeah, it seems like it's more of a lifestyle than a diet. And that's what they found in these cities is that the people who've been living long, when they asked them, that their responses all had to do mostly with how they lived their life. Blue Zone Life. Blue Zone Life. Dot com. I will assume that they did not have the life of going through five teenagers. <laughs> Maybe smaller family size would increase that. <laughs> Yeah, that I mean, it, seem, it seems like there's many, many, many factors that weigh into this that they don't account for. Absolutely. So um, let's jump to Texas. Let's go to the next one. Yeah. All right. Maybe we can find a common thread. Mm -hmm. Like they all wear boots. And do cow tipping. Yeah. So. Have uh, Now, since you grew up in the country, mm -hmm. I've heard conflicting reports. Cow tipping... Is it a myth? Oh no, oh no, it's true. It's true. Have you, have you ever? And I'll just give you a little bit of an anonymity here. Mm -hmm. Have you ever known somebody that did that? I was married to somebody that did that. Mm. Can't can't prosecute him now. Mm -mm. Were you there? I might have been using the headlights to light the area. Mm. You were in the pasture in a vehicle. Mm -hmm. mm. When you tip a cow, does the cow get hurt? Typically when you tip. or Yeah, tip for short. Just tip. It really ticks them off. Mm. Do you have I'm to sure. run after that? I don't know. I was in the car. Is it like <laughs> someone's job to hold the tail? Make sure, <laughs> make sure they don't chase everybody? <laughs> the new guy gets to hold the tail? You pick out a sweet cow. <laughs> You know, once you get them upset, not many of them are sweet. Oh, no, that is true. That was true. They will hunt you down. But for for people that might want to try this, it's probably a bad idea because cows are humongous. Mm -hmm. And you could probably get injured really bad, really I, easy. I just don't or think. Or get shot. I just don't think that people do it nowadays. I mean, the millennials, I, I would think one out of 100 million might have Cause tipped it a cow you're saying it takes too much work it is it is work and it's a four person but they could job. put on their tiktok it, it would be really good on a tiktok <laughs> i mean to say let's let's throw in a little of that but, and uh, i'm just bubblegum music and yeah we're not suggesting anyone do this it's probably a, a form of animal animal abuse but um the cows sleep laying down so you could probably just act it out like you did it that's true you know hey we tipped this one you just missed it yeah, and also you know the horses are real protective of those cows too, so you got to watch out or for the, them. Or they put mules and things in yeah. there. Yeah, they will. Kick oh, you, you don't want to mess with a bull either. Mm -mm. If he if he catches you in there, mm -hmm. yeah, it's probably not going to be a good day. Yeah, no. Blue zone number two, blue zone number three. Where are we at? Yeah, we. You're running out of room. I can't find anything on uh, on Texas. That's all right. Let's go international. That was a myth. The Texas was a myth. I kind of figured there's actually, a lot of brisket you know, there. You know what I think it is? I actually think what I was looking at were cities that were trying to be more blue. So cities that were implementing these strategies. Oh, okay. Yes. That I don't, I don't like think they were. a good slogan for re-election. I made your city more blue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you, you, I'm not going to go there. We need to have um, an area of um, gathering area for the, in fact, instead of four o'clock you know, tea, high you, tea, you we could have I, high wine. Yeah. <laughs> you know what seems strange to me is it's got to be only a certain number of locations in the world that you could gather this data from 100 years ago because most people move. Yeah. All right, so I got them. Okay. All right, so there's five places. Five places in the world dubbed as blue zones. Okinawa, Japan, Sard Sardin Sardinia, 
Sardinia, Italy. Sound sounded good. Uh, Nicoya, Costa Rica. Ooh, some tough ones today. Icaria, Greece, and Loma Linda, California. Wow, got an American one in there. Yeah. Well, let's let's bop Loma Linda. Must be where all the gold is. I think there's a lot of skinny people there. I went I went to California one time. Oh, well, just I, once? No, well, I said several. And have you been to I, Loma Linda? I have. Or did you see a Linda have, in California? <laughs> I have been to Burbank and uh, uh, Hollywood and all those places, and I will tell you, by an estimate of double, I was the biggest person in the city. The biggest hearted person? They were tiny people. Little bitty, little bitty people. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, You could probably just gauge, like, college football teams size <laughs> that might be you know, true usc yeah that's true. smaller than mm-hmm. let's say them farm fed boys of alabama yeah alabama yep alabama got some roll tide going but i did go um i, I did go to downtown um la to go to that big market they have once a month what's Can't in the market everything I mean, Let's narrow it down to like maybe things we identify. Purses and, and clothes and silks and anything that's imported into so not Los food. Angeles. I did not see food. So can I not talk because it's not food? Uh, no, I'm just no, but wondering. I, I will just, say. We're talking about blue zones. Okay, I will say it was I, the I don't best think that salad. purses have an effect on the blue zone. Well, I don't know. Purses have an effect on everything, darling. But I will <laughs> say to you that the the grass that I was fed uh, in, at the California Pizza Kitchen, I had a salad. I'm sorry, what? California Pizza Kitchen. Now let's go back kitchen. before that. The, the the phrase you said before that. I have no recollection. <laughs> but we went... But you said the grass I was fed. Yes, yeah, so the grass I was fed because it, it was had all sorts of stuff not, in it's it. It's not metaphoric, is it? No. <laughs> I don't know what was in that salad, but it tasted different than any other salad that I'd ever eaten. Did you get hungrier after you ate it? <laughs> I, I think that's a precursor to eating pizza. Were you calmer? <laughs> no, but I just noticed everybody came in and got a salad. They didn't have the pizza afterwards like I did. <laughs> All right, what do you got? You've been clicking away on the computer right. there, doctor. So this is interesting. <clears throat> the link between health and money in... California. So what is it? Loma, Loma Linda. Tip top health due to diet and exercise helps keeps costs down too. Or Orlick suspects, I feel fine. I've been doing aerobics for 30 years. I take no medications, nothing. Said Dorothy Zane at 86. That's something. That's something. Well, but uh, granddaddy on the farm is yeah. 90. Right. And the boy hadn't done any aerobics yeah um but working on a farm that's that's huge that's yeah. true that's yeah. huge that's all and that's actually kind of what it goes back to is it he, keep, he might be interviewed here for the blue zone pretty it keeps soon. talking Absolutely. about how the people who live the longest have active lives so like farmers they're always outside right they're always moving and then they're eating natural so if he has a farm i'm, I'm assuming he's probably eaten he dead. kills he kills them yeah yeah we don't do any of that mm. we try to eat healthy we try to get outside. We're in a different culture here. You know, mm-hmm. maybe we need to get back. Well, he back does to like blue dirt. zones. Yeah, he he likes dirt and and cows. I think everyone and, should uh, like dirt, unless yeah. you only grow hydroponics. Yeah, I mean, you gotta have dirt to grow the food. He told me one time that he only ate stuff that they grew, so that would. Yeah, that's that would be it. That's exactly yeah, that's exactly kind of what they keep getting back to is that these blue zones are basically places where people eat fresh, a lot of vegetables, right? Farm the table. And then they have healthy lifestyles. Then they make wine out of what's left over of the grapes. So if we all had a diet, I'll just call it a blue zone diet, a blue zone lifestyle. Um, do you think we could Get rid of some of these healthcare problems we have. 
I think definitely when you change your diet, you know, there's improvement in your body's natural health, right? You improve your immunity, you improve your, um, your organ function. And when you do that, yeah, absolutely. There's definitely changes that are made with regards to the expression of disease. So, you know, when you, when you change your diet, you change your lifestyle, you, you start to make all these major changes. If you do it right, you really should see lower health care. Okay, so you, that means you're focusing on, I mean, it's a focus of yours. You have to try. You have to try. Yeah, mm. it, and it's tough. It is tough. There's nothing fun about, hey, I can't have that cake right now. Sorry. We'll see you guys later. Or I'm going to fast. I can't eat. And then you forget to bring your food home. Yes, and that wonderful mahi is sitting in the... I know. I'm not going to forget it today. Okay. But how can you can you eat raw fish the next day? We'll find out. <laughs> I might slap it on the grill there for that a minute. That might be a Maybe real the, good the, idea. The you got to put it, put it in the grill or put it back on, in well, the I'm, oven. You know, <laughs> go rogue. I'm not worried about my afterlife. They could just you know. do it cold. Yeah. I, I, it's a salad. There you go. From Nukes. We'll give a we'll give a shout out. They make good ahi tuna salads. Nukes does make good salads. Yeah. Definitely in the blue zone at Nukes. Well, I'm sure they're from California. So tell me more about what else in a lifestyle other than food. That's all y'all talk about. It's food. You're making me hungry. Well, that's the that's your environment you're taking in. Is the food. So if it's bad, you're taking it in. Okay, it's not time for me to break my fast yet. So you don't I'm fasting as well. Okay. Double fast. Okay. Are you fasting today? I'm not fasting today. Oh. So I found that with fasting, I just feel better. If I don't fast, even if I eat moderately, I always feel like I'm full. And I don't like that anymore. Oh my goodness, Lori is rubbing off on you. Uh. You feel full when you don't fast? Yeah, always. Like you can't, I, I just feel like my stomach never empties. Mm. And then, so if I fast, and my fast lasts till 5 o'clock every day from, you know, 10 o'clock the prior day, um, about 4 o'clock, I'll get this kind of like, and this might sound weird, but like a flushing sensation that everything's gone. Like a rumble in my stomach about four o'clock every day, and I just it feels empty, and it's like okay, we're ready for the new day. Hmm. It's interesting, and I and I in the first few days it happened, I was like, ah, this is just me. No, it's it's actually I feel like finally that stuff's finally out, and then I can begin to graze again in hmm. my blue zone. Of course, no sugar. Okay, uh, lifestyle, other lifestyle that they have. They're hippies. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of outdoors. A lot of outdoors. A lot of outdoors. I'm not labeling. You weren't a hippie? Okay. I, I It takes one to know one. Y- yeah. So, your lifestyle growing up is probably different than most people would anticipate. Yes. So, you were athletic. Yes, very. To the point of... Now, I've been to where this Jasper place is Mm -hmm. in Coleman. Mm -hmm. Um, And what I found is that from the places you said you rode your bike from Mm -hmm. and to, Mm -hmm. it seems like it's about 100 miles. Yeah, it is a long... On country roads with no shoulder. Yeah. (laughs) That people do, I don't know, 85, 90 miles an hour on. Mm -hmm. And that, back in then... And she would ride this every day. Uh, Mom was a force to be reckoned with. For real. Like, I wouldn't even do that now. So, um, definitely some blue zone qualities there. Absolutely. And uh, I had to wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning and go fishing for bass. Wow. And then we would eat uh, only one thing at a meal. Uh, we would have, for breakfast, we would have an egg. You don't want your foods getting friendly? mm uh, For lunch... We would have something green, and then for, like, we would have corn or peas or whatever was growing, and then for supper, we would have a fish. Each of Sweet. us got our own that fish. That sounds really good. You need, you need to plug that in? 
Go ahead. Here, I'll mute your mic. I think you're on uh, three, maybe. Mom, is that? That's I'm good. Okay. Yeah. You so sh- we get it's outside. It's fine. Okay. All right. You just have to make it without the crutch. You got the cell phone, right? Yep. All right. Cool. So we're um, so, so anyway, that was that was the food, and um, I was strong, uh, and you know, like English peas were my friend. So. And what about dad? Didn't like English peas. Oh, he didn't like anything green. He liked he I liked like, beef. I like peas. Peas are good. He was a beef person. Yeah. So, um, but but that everything was raised on the farm. Thank you, Lori. Yeah. Lori helped bring some notes in. <laughs> um, it was her stealth we, moves. We, we had some technology issues. Robert had some loss of life of his battery. And yeah. the water we had came from the lake. Yuck. That's how pure the lake was. Wow. I got a bacteria infection from that lake. Well, it's not that pure anymore. It's the the coal companies have um, dumped a little too much. And, in and the medical care in that area is not the best. No, unless it, and, and they are not strong on um, opioid addiction um, rehab. That would be a good business to start there. <laughs> I don't know where you're going with this. But we'll, maybe we should just talk about it later Okay. <laughs> when we're not recording, because I don't know if you have information that might incriminate people. <laughs> but yeah, we all we all can say that opioids are a problem. In the Appalachians. Yeah, right mm-hmm. there in the foothills, they call mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. So Blue Zones, are you moving? You, you're probably in the perfect place. You're like the in the opposite of Blue Zone. Yeah. You, the, you could really change the numbers here. That's that's always the goal. Yeah. You know. So, all right. If I were to want to create my own little blue community, what would I do? Blue well, immunity. When it comes to a, a blue immunity, basically, <laughs> <laughs> you know, what you're, what you're doing is you're getting everyone to, it's kind of like going back in time. That's kind of how I explain a blue zone. It's like going back in time, right? Eat, eat fresh, eat whole live simple right get off get off your phone get off your laptop right go outside walk around ride your bike hang out with your family you know have family dinners i think that's really big um you know hang out with the people you love spend spend time with them don't don't spend all day at work obviously you got to work but when you get home don't go straight to watch tv right make a meal with your family sit down maybe sit down outside eat as a group, right? Hang out, have fun, laugh. I think those are all really the main qualities when it comes to the blue zone is going back in time. So if you, if, if we were able to go back in time and I'll pose this to each of you and I'll answer it myself, what time period would you go back to? You could give me a year, a range, a, a hundred year range. You, you go first, Martha. Um, let me think if I were to have Alzheimer's and I were to live in no, the so past, it, it, if you could time travel, oh, if I back could time to a certain travel, time, I'm where just did looking Alzheimer's for, come from? Well, because I mean, that's what people do. I mean, they get Alzheimer's and then they live in the past. Oh, okay. So you, you would say just in your mind, right? No, we're talking about for like, real, for real. Yeah. When, when they finally get this time travel thing figured out, Mm-hmm. If we're not taken first, uh, would you travel back in time to which period to live if you had to choose to live in a period? I can tell you, boys, it is much easier to live now than it is to live back in the days when I was living in, you know, young. Uh, I would say anything that contains a microwave, I'd still be into. (laughs) So maybe like you want to be born in the 50s? And then just live through, you know, or is that be too early? I am. Well, I would like to go back to the Cuban Missile Crisis days. I I mean, that was interesting when we would sit in our desk and we would have to go through an atomic bomb drill. That was interesting. But you've already lived that and it's in your memory. Mm -hmm. You don't want to experience that again, do you? 
No, but I'd like to look at it through adult eyes. You want someone else to experience and you watch them? <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. So you bring a friend with you in this <laughs> machine? Just grab them at the last second? No, I, you know, I, I'm looking toward the future. Well, I think we all are, thankfully. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, nowadays, with what I'm seeing, I don't know if I'd want to go any further. I'd really just like to stop it where it's at now. I don't think it's getting any easier um, to do the right things anymore. And I, that, that, that goes for, like, diet and um, that goes for, like, how people act. Well, I, I will tell you that um, in the 70s, uh, experiencing the uh, hippie culture uh, of um, peace and that evil kindness. marijuana was around back then. It was a little bit. I, did I ever tell you the story of I walked into your brother number three's house and he had put a lampshade on a bong, and I he. He, when I, some medical issues? Yes. When I, I pulled the lampshade off, he goes, how did you know what that was? I said, I went through the 70s. How did you think I didn't? And that's one thing that I've noticed about all teenagers. And uh, they think that nothing's ever that been was done for tobacco, before. The yes, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm certain. And I, it would, it, how did they think that? Nothing happened before. You know, these are some of the questions about the blue zone that I would have. What, what things was that culture doing that the other cultures weren't? True. Like you know, they they go into it and they study it, but then once they're locked into that study, they pretty much have to go where it leads. When they might run across something, like you know, all these all these people took an aspirin a day or something they didn't know till later, you know, that we find out that these blue zones maybe weren't what they we thought they were. Um, but it seems like by your practice and by what we've researched that there probably is something to it. The lifestyle, the diet, um, probably not taking a lot of prescription medication, um, maybe growing their own foods, um, having more nutrients in the soil, things like that, um, rather than this maybe some anomaly that would tie them together. Mm. So what time would you move back to? I didn't forget. I think I always liked the 20s. The roaring 20s. The roaring 20s, but you got to be an adult in the 20s, right? So at least 30 so I'd probably be born in like 1890. 1890. Yeah. I had a great grandfather that was born in the 1800s, had a terrible wagon accident. You know, and you don't think about it. Wow. Like someone that actually saw wagons live long enough to see computers. And the rocks that's pretty, that's pretty and, cool. and went through the moon, the, yeah, that's you know, cool. the moon launch and everything from wagon to Yeah, we'll just call, moon it, launch. call it the moon launch. Yeah. You know, not saying that anybody actually arrived there I yet. I said moon launch. Um, so the 20s, where what, where would you live? What part of the world? Got to live in a city like Chicago. Okay. okay. You know. Probably would have been a... Wear a suit every day. Whoa. Occupation change or stay the same? Probably change. Two. You can say it. It's okay. <laughs> Nobody's listening. You know, got to be a gangster. Oh, <laughs> if you're in the twenties. You're gonna be with Al Capone. Oh yeah, yeah. Like wearing a wearing a nice hat. And then you could come back to to wearing a, wearing a suit. Modern times and give Geraldo the tips <laughs> of where to find the money. If you're yeah, if you're in the twenties, that's that's what you got to do. I think I would like to go back to, hmm, probably similar. I, w I would probably say but uh, the maybe the 50s for me because I like cars and things like that. Um, and I think that was when cars began to really become something special. Um, so I'd want to go back there with like a pocket full of money <laughs> and buy all the cars and seal them up and then travel back. And, That'd be good. Yeah. It actually, it'd also be really cool to hang out with like Frank Sinatra, the, the Rat Pack. 
Yeah, uh, what you know of him. I guess everything that I talk about comes back to being a gangster of some sort. It's this alter ego. <laughs> this alter ego of, of gangsterism. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I couldn't have predicted it. Well, it's, you know. just that, it's just that Italian side. Oh, okay. Now, your parents, uh, were they native of America or were they from a different country and migrated? My great, my great grandma and grandpa were from Italy. A blue zone or no? No. No blue zone. Naples. Na- well, that's still, got the wine. Still a great place. That's it got is the a great wine. Naples and Calabria. Mm-hmm. What's what's the major? Have you been there? I've not. No. You have not. Ooh, I think maybe as much as you instruct others to go on vacation, <laughs> you might have to heed your own advice and get a little back to your roots. That's true. Find out what it was really like there. I'm sure it's changed the culture, but you could probably find what it was. You know, the history of it easier right, when you went. There's so much history there. Uh, what, what do you got? I just looked up. You know the the area and of the blue zone that we were talking about. And it's, um, that's where the church of the seven day Adventist or, and they treat their body like a temple. So. Is this in California? Live, yeah. That's L- the Loma L- Linda. L- Loma Linda. Mm-hmm. Yep. Hmm. So they're f- fresh, everything. Yeah. And we've talked about that, how religion basically um, helps you determine your diet sometimes and no scripture. smoking or alcohol they eat little meat or fish little meat baby cows baby cows baby chickens is that kind of little meat that's little meat <laughs> just a little meat <laughs> how much meat do you eat just little, little who meat. wants to eat a little baby pig well I they're, they're no, big on no. beans they're vain people so they might be a little bloated good thing that they can you know leave the windows open most yeah. of the year Mm-hmm. Just leave the fans on and have it air out. Well, that's most of the reason that they live outdoors so much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's by necessity. They don't want to be near each other. They probably don't bathe every day. It was started by a group of doctors. That it was, it was um, doctor, doctor. Seven, seven, in the 70s. Mm-hmm. What type of doctors? A, a bunch of them. Physicians? Yes. Plastic surgeons? Yeah, I'm sure. Psychiatrists? And, and they... They don't have, at Loma Linda University, the cafeteria does not serve meat. It is a vegetarian cafeteria. Interesting. I wonder who came up with a policy, or was it by um, by the people that were eating there? They said, hey, we don't want this meat. You take it. And, doctor, you'll be glad to know that they go to uh, chapel every Wednesday. And... Uh, they're taught to stop stressing about test and stop texting. Put away your to do list. Stress. I, you know, I still think I wouldn't eat stressed. No. But you know what? I catch myself doing it though. It's hard not to. I'm like, ah, oh, what am I doing? It's hard not to. My pyloric valve is definitely closed. And they live ten years longer than everybody else. It's funny. How many people think about the pyloric valve like we do? I don't think many. Not many. M- many people. Or they're like, they have no idea what's going on down there. If they're stressed, it's like closed off. When When is your pyloric valve the most free? I'd say maybe with some neutral temperature water. So your pyloric valve is going to need a pH in your stomach of between one to two. Right. So one of the biggest reasons that people get heartburn is actually because they don't produce enough stomach acid to get the pH of the contents down that low when the ph doesn't get that low the pyloric valve doesn't actually open which means that it regurgitates up into the esophagus that's actually one of the main reasons for GERD which is gastroesophageal reflux condition so when you can get that ph down you're actually going to free that up are you saying there could be an indefinite pyloric valve closing no, 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 no. It's not it's not indefinite. It's just that your body wants that optimal pH. And it's that pH that activates the opening. So when your body is in that zone, it will open more freely. So is there a time where it like won't open for hours or days? Can't Ex- answer that. Extreme stress maybe? I can't answer that question. I will. I'll I answer it. <laughs> I don't believe 
that there's a time. If okay. your stomach is full, I would assume. It's got to open. It's got to open. It's got to open. Right? Although I feel like mine doesn't open sometimes when it should. And maybe that's why I feel full. And the thing is, too, is your body's going to keep producing hydrochloric acid. So if your stomach isn't at the right pH, your body's going to keep producing acid. So maybe it's closed, but your body will eventually get it down to the pH it needs to be to open. So lower, the lower than, tell us about the scale. So pH works, seven is basic, or sorry, seven is neutral. Okay, so seven is like water. Now it goes from zero to 14. Zero to seven is acidic. The closer to zero, the more acidic. Seven to 14 is basic. The closer to 14, the more basic. So that low number is what you're looking for. You're looking for a very, very acidic because what it does is the the acid actually causes what's called the denaturation of protein, which helps protein to start breaking down. Right. Um, is there is there symptoms of your, other than the GERD, is there symptoms of your pyloric valve not being open? That's going to be the major symptom. Major. Would that be heartburn? Heartburn, GERD, maybe, yeah, we'll just leave it at that, I think. Um, is there it now, is there any way you could, if, if you were in a blue zone as a doctor, um, and you had your practice that, um, that you're managing people's nutrition and trying to help their health with that, um, would it be more challenging than it is here in the good old Uf, US of A in Southern Northwest Florida? I, you know, I still think that there's a need, right? Because people are still going to get sick and have discomfort. You know, you can have a great lifestyle, great healthy diet. There will definitely be less people, but there's definitely still, even in a blue zone, I'm, I'm, I'm sure people that are in need. Yeah. So not, not, not everybody's going to live to be a hundred, even in a blue zone. Um, and what I, when I read the documentation that I read, it wasn't like, thousands it was like they were measuring like 50 and 60 people mm -hmm. they were these you know centurions it's not a lot no so how many weren't centurions true go ahead mom well i was i was uh, reading a little bit about the loma linda and it says that it's surrounded by ontario and um another area that are in the gray zone Ooh. very poverty uh, mm. very fast food, very, uh, drug induced, uh, area. And I just wonder how they keep them out of Loma Linda. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know if we could solve that one on this episode, Okay, but I think we might branch into some gray zone talk next time. Mm -hmm. Um, Robert, we thank you. Dr. Robert Corvino with Array Strength, we thank you for joining, joining us today with our Blue Zone conversation. I don't know if we actually accomplished anything, but possibly some entertainment for some people. Well, I do. Mom, thank you for joining us. Who knows what a Blue Zone is? Now people are aware. That's right. So thank you for joining us on Wellness Way USA Radio. I'm your host, Jeb Odom, and God bless.